Hey, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to install a flex fuel kit from Dorch Engineering on a G82 M4. Now, the kit we're going to be installing today is specifically designed around the S58 powered G series BMW. So the G87 M2, the G80 M3, and also the G82 M4. If you don't have one of those cars and you still want to get flex fuel, we have it available for a ton of different makes and models from the N20, B58, and everything in between. All of that is linked for you down below and can be found at keys.com, K I E S.com. With that, let's get started. The first part of the process is to disconnect the negative terminal of your battery using a 10 mil. So just disconnect it, set that to the side. Then what I like to do is I like to take this bottom tray and just put it in the way. So that way, if anybody accidentally tries to shut the trunk, I won't get locked out. Next, what we need to do is we need to work with the fuel line. The fuel line is basically over here to back here. To make it a little bit easier, I'm going to remove the strut brace, just this cross part over here. It's held in with these four 15 millimeter nuts and then remove your engine cover. and just carefully lift up on your engine cover. Next, we're going to remove our DME cover over here. Just pull the fuel line off and over like that. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to replace the fuel line with the upgraded Dorch line with the sensor. So the one end is over here, it snakes around this way, and the other end is right down there. That end's gonna be very hard for me to show you what to do, so I'm gonna show you up here. What I like to do, the fuel line is under pressure, so be very careful. I'm just gonna put a piece of plastic over the DME just for extra protection, and then I take some microfiber towels, put them under as well. You shouldn't get a crazy amount of fuel that sprays or anything, but it is a pressurized system, so you have to just keep that in mind, just be very safe with it. The next thing you need to do is you need to remove this little gray ring. So to do that, just kind of spread it and push it off. I'm gonna put that over here. And then with the fuel line, what we're going to do, you're going to compress it. So you're gonna push it together. Then you're going to push this little piece of plastic in, and then you're going to very carefully and very slowly, you're gonna separate it. And that's when you're going to get a little bit of fuel leak. All right, so I'm gonna compress it together. Try to do it so you can see it. Push that in like that. And then I'm just gonna cover it a little bit so we don't get sprayed. Okay. Oh. Not too bad. <laughs> cover a little more. Okay. And that is it. So as you saw, we did get a little spritz, but nothing too crazy. Um, I always prefer to do that over here where I can see what's going on than over there. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to stuff some microfibers down there and I'm going to do the exact same thing. If you take a look over here, you can see where I'm going to be working. Once again, there's our little ring. And then the system's no longer under pressure. So you won't get a spray again, but there is some fuel in the line that may drip out. That's why I put some towels down there. Okay, and then once you have it, then you can take your fuel line. It does have a little fuel in it. I'm just gonna disconnect this. All right, so once you've done that, drain the fuel line into my towel here. So we can do that with minimal spillage. And there's your stock line. All right, so in your kit, you're going to grab your new fuel line, your flex fuel sensor, and then this little adapter over here. The way that it gets set up is this little blue fitting over here is going to go on your stock line just like this. This is going to get routed over there. The black fitting is going to go on your flex fuel sensor. The black side of this is going to go on the other side of the sensor. And then the blue is going to go on the factory fuel line. And to tighten this down, you're going to need a 16 and 18 and a 19 millimeter open-ended wrench. All right, so to prep this, what we're going to do is first take off these ends and then you can loosely unscrew this thing here. When you look at it, there's a little tiny groove cut in there. So what's gonna happen is the edge of this is going to sit right in that little groove. So you can see it slides right in. And you can take this, put it in here, and then snug it up. For this side, it's a 16 and a 19. Then you can install the adapter, same thing. Look for the groove, slide that groove right on there like that, push that on, and then you can snug this one up. This one is a 16 and an 18. So then what you're gonna do, unscrew this blue piece here, and same thing, the little cutout, you're gonna slide over the ridge. I'll show you on this one. So on the one down there, you're gonna make sure that you slide it on like that. And then I'm going to snug everything up. So then what you can do is take an 18 and hold the fitting and take a 19 and tighten up the blue end. 
just like that. So then you can take the other end of your fuel line, route it along here like this. And then uh, what I probably should have mentioned earlier, sometimes it's a little bit easier to slide that on like that and then put the blue part on. Otherwise it's very easy to drop the blue part into the abyss. And you can snug this up like so. And then don't forget any towels that you may have put down to prevent any dripping. All right, at this point in the process, the fuel line and sensor are fully installed. After your installation, go back, verify that there's no leak over here or here. That's why we're not gonna put the engine cover back on right away. You always wanna make sure that you check for fuel leaks. We've never had an issue with a Dorch kit, but you always wanna be extra careful because you are dealing with fuel in a very hot engine. That being said, let's move on to the wiring. First thing we're gonna do, you're gonna take your connection that looks like this, and you're gonna plug it into your flex fuel sensor. Make sure you hear a little snap like that. All right, so once that's connected, what I'm gonna do is make a little U-turn here. I'm going to zip tie this to this other line every couple inches. Then we're going to send it through the passenger side, and then we're gonna go through the firewall to the passenger footwell. Then once you get about here, you're going to remove this line, twist this counterclockwise, and this is going to rock up and out. And we're going to sneak this through right here. There's a little gap just wide enough to get this through. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to feed this through the firewall right over here. Now, luckily in the M4, it is completely open. On some of the cars like the G20, they do have an extra battery here. First thing to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to remove this little white connector thing here. Basically that just holds the wire harness onto a screw. Once you do that, you can move this out of the way. And this is the grommet that we're going to be replacing. So you can just reach in, pop that out like that. And as you can see, Dorch already has a pre-installed one that you're going to use instead of the factory. Once you get to this spot, what you're gonna do is just pause because we need to continue from the inside of the car. Now, the next thing we need to do in the car is we need to remove this under plastic over here and also this corner piece. To do that, you need to start by removing the floor mat and also this piece of trim. So let's pull out the mat. It has these hooks on the end. Now we'll pull out this piece here. That's what you wanna do. Just very carefully get your hand under and lift straight up like that. So this is what the clip system looks like on this side piece of trim. As you can see, only one stuck here and the rest stuck in the car. So what you need to do is take a trim tool afterwards and you pop all of these back out and they slide into this track from the wide side to the narrow. And then you'll be able to line it up, make sure that this piece goes under piece over there and then you just pop it down. All right, next we need to remove this under plastic over here. There is a little tab over here, and then there's another one over here. Basically what you wanna do is you can do it with your hand or if you have a flat tool like this, just stick it in, twist it 90 degrees, and this whole panel will drop down. One, there's two. And once you release those clips, this whole thing is gonna drop down like this. Then once you have it down, there's just one connection that powers one of the lights, and then it's held on by this little tab over here. All you need to do is just lift up, and then you can pull this piece out of the car. Then for this corner piece, simply pull it this way, just like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a knife, and we are going to make a little plus, so we're just gonna make a slice up, and then also left to right, and that's going to enable us to be able to feed this through the foam over here. I'll make a little cross here. Then you can take the end of your wire here and simply press it through. Okay, just move this up. And then we're gonna pull it through from the other side. Then from the inside of the car, you can gently pull it through. And then to make sure that everything is sealed, once you have enough wire on that side, simply press in your grommet just like that. All right, so once you've gotten this far, what we need to do is we need to be able to get to this black connector over here, and then this one over here. So to do this, first thing you need to do is drop this over here. It's gonna be hard for you to see. There's a little tab. You press the tab over, and then you can remove this. So if you look over here, there's a little tab. You just gently press it over, and then you can slide it right off. Then once you've done that, you can just pull this back like so. 
Um, if you wanna completely remove it, you can, but you don't have to. All right, so let's start with connector B, which is this one up here. The way that this works, there's a little tab on the left, a little tab on the right, and then there's a lever. So you press in the tabs, left and right, and then you pull down the lever, and it's going to work itself out. So once again, now you can see a little bit better. You press in this tab, you press in this tab, and then you move the lever. When you go to put it back in, you slide it in, and then you raise the lever, and it's gonna pull it in for you. So now what we need to do is we need to take off this black cover so that we can repin this harness. To do that, what you wanna do, you wanna take a pick tool, and over here, there is a little tab that's sticking through. So we're going to pull that down, start to work that out. And then there's one here on the other side, a gray one. So we're gonna work that out, and we're gonna work this out, and these are gonna slide out together just like that. All right, so once you have that off, what we need to do is we need to remove pins 47 and 48. The way that you find out what pin it is, it's actually written on it. So over here it says 37. That indicates that this end pin over here is 37. This one is 54. So we already know that it's these two wires that we need to remove, but it's always good to double check. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, which is going to be this one with the black stripe. And then 48 is the one with the white stripe. So the best way to do this is to apply a little upward pressure, and then you can just press on these little tabs and these are gonna come out really easy. And remember, when you take these out, the black one is on the right. Okay. And if they do get hung up, typically they're just hung up right here. You just press that tab again. And okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the, the white one out first, and then I'm going to take our new pin, and I'm going to slide that in until it clicks, and then I'm going to remove our black stripe pin and take our Dorch harness. Make sure when you're doing this, you do it with this little tab facing out. It's gonna go just like that. And then slide them in until they click in place and you can verify with your eyes, make sure that everything looks good. Next, you're gonna take the little piece that looks like this. You're going to face it away from you and the black stripe is going to go on the right. White stripe is going to go on the left. You're gonna take your pins and this time with the little tab facing down, you're going to slide those in. Make sure you hear that audible click and then you can fasten the little tab like this, and then you're going to plug it in right over here. When you plug it in, make sure that you get a solid connection. And once you've connected it, make sure that your wire that has the black stripe also is connected to the black stripe wire and the white stripe to the white stripe. Once you've done that, we can reinstall our little casing part here, and then we can reinstall it into the FEM module. So to do this, just slide it on, make sure that you hear an audible click, make sure that both the black and the gray sides are fully installed. Then make sure that this little lever is fully open. Slide it in until it starts to give you a little bit of resistance and then carefully just pull up on the lever until it clicks and that's how you know it's fully installed. All right, now that we're done the hard one, we're gonna do the easy one, which is over here. So again, you're going to press in on these tabs and then pull that lever down just like that and slide that out. This one you're gonna have a lot more visibility as to what's going on. Okay, so just like the other one, we're going to carefully remove it from the black part. Okay, it's just a little tab over here, and then a little tab over here. You can slide off the casing. All right, for this, we are looking for pin two and pin 24. So if we take a look here, see if we can find some numbers. Sometimes they are very difficult to see. Okay, so here's pin one over here. So then pin two we need to remove, which is this wire here, and press down on this little tab here, and that'll come sliding out. And then with this one, you're gonna take your green wire, slide it into slot two, just like that. And then the other one we need is pin 24. Flip this over, and that's going to be this wire right here. Then you can take your door harness, that one's gonna slide in there, just like that. Then you're gonna plug your factory wires into here, make sure that the wires line up. Brown one's gonna go on this side, and this other one's gonna go over here. Make sure that you hear that audible click, and then you can snap it in, then you can plug it in, and just verify that you have your wires correct, and then you can reinstall your harness. All right, so we'll take these, slide them in here, make sure that it's fully clipped in, slide this over till it stops, pull up the harness, and it'll lock everything in place.
Then you're going to take the Z-Tronics controller that comes with your kit. You're gonna take the wire that we ran through the firewall. That's going to go into the four pin location. You're gonna take your eight pin connector, pop that in, and the installation is complete. All you need to do is hide the box over here, tuck some of these wires, reassemble your car, and the physical hardware installation and your fuel line are completely installed. All right, next what you wanna do is start the car after you install all of the hardware, and we're going to verify that there's no fuel leaking. All right, dry as a bone. Let's flash it with boot mode. So now that we have the Dorch Flex Fuel Kit fully installed in the car, what we need to do now is we need to flash the car with our boot mode map so that we can take advantage of flex fuel. Now, specifically for the S58, we recommend running up to about E50 or E60 max. What starts to happen is when you use ethanol, you typically use about 30% more fuel and you will tap out the fuel system. So we recommend staying E50 or E60. And even at E50 or E60, you're still gonna get a ton of power out of your car. Now, we're not going to go through step-by-step -step how to flash your car, but we do have a video that shows you all of that detail down in the description below. What I do wanna show you is when you're choosing your map, what you wanna do is you wanna go over here to where it says multi-map. This is the one that is flex fuel enabled. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flash the car off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like when you start to add some ethanol in your tank. All right, so next what we wanna do is we want to test the system. So start the car and then what you're going to do, this little button over here on your steering wheel, it goes down two clicks. You hold it down one click. When you do that, what's going to happen is your tack is going to become your new ethanol gauge. So as you hold it down, you can see it goes to one. That means we have 10% ethanol. So if it goes, if you have E85, it's going to go you know, basically to the eight, or if you're E60, it's going to go to the six. Now I'm gonna to try to demonstrate this. His tank is very full with 93 octane, but let's see if I can squeeze some ignite right in there to see if we can make this bump up a little bit. All right, so we were able to get about a gallon or so of Ignite Red, which is E90, into the tank. So let's click this down one click and see how we do. So as you can see, we got it to about E19. And as you can imagine, this is a much better approach than mixing fuel at the gas station and kind of estimating what you think it is, how much you thought you had in your tank. This is spot on and it makes it so much easier and it perfectly calibrates the tune to the exact ethanol level that you're at. Another reason why I love flex fuel so much is in New Jersey where we're at, there's not many E85 stations, so it's very difficult for me to find it. So this way, if I have it, great, I get the extra power. And if not, I can always put 91 or 93 in and be perfectly safe. So once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys. If you're interested in a Dorch Flex Fuel Kit or a boot mode tune for your BMW, see the links down in the description. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.